It's easy to get overwhelmed sometimes about all the issues and problems that are going on in this world, especially our dependence on foreign oil, our contribution to global warming, our energy problems, our fuel problems. I mean, it's tremendous, you know, what can we do? The world's in turmoil. Oil is a big part of the problem, and biodiesel is a solution. To really solve the whole sustainability problem, we need to figure out how we can get sustainable using the current infrastructure. We don't need a technology that's out there in the future that one day um, people will be driving their cars in the water, one day people will be using crystal energy to, to power their vehicles or to, to get energy. You know, we need technology that can be applied today, that can be used in the existing infrastructure. When I found about biodiesel that, oh, I can use my existing car without modifying it, I can use the existing pumps and tanks and pipelines and refineries, everything that's currently out there, and I get my oil for free from the restaurants, I, I, I couldn't think of anything better that, than that. My name is Martin Stenflo, I'm one of the co-founders of Boulder Biodiesel. The mission of Boulder Biodiesel is to spread the use and the awareness of biodiesel and alternative fuels in general. When I found out about biodiesel, I didn't believe it. I read about it and there were people claiming that it was true, but I had to find out for myself. I made a couple of blender batches in my kitchen. You take a blender, you take some vegetable oil, some alcohol from your kitchen, some lye, and you throw it in there, and you make some biodiesel, and it works. The, the chemistry works, but does it really work as a fuel? So I'm riding my bike home and my neighbor across the street has a for sale sign on his diesel Mercedes. So I bought his car for $1,500, 1983 Mercedes Benz, and poured some of the fuel I made in my kitchen into my tank and it still worked. I was using 100% vegetable-based fuel in my diesel Mercedes, which I got for $1,500, and I was making fuel for 70 cents a gallon in a little processor I built for about 30 bucks. I discovered that I can be completely petroleum independent for a very minimal cost. That's the way Boulder Biodiesel started. We wanted to pool together our resources so we could make fuel for each other. Well, it turned out that there was a far larger amount of people interested than we originally thought. And before long, we had 100 members in our organization. And we host conferences where we give people the skills and all the information they need to make their own biodiesel and set up their own biodiesel production system, either at home or on a large scale. This is one-time used deep frying oil from a turkey. Anybody can use and make biodiesel. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of skill. So we teach people how to make biodiesel on a small lab scale, like when I made my first biodiesel out of a blender using some vegetable oil from the kitchen, some alcohol and some lye. Makes your margaritas taste kind of funny afterwards, but essentially you can make biodiesel on a very, very small scale. If you want to just use the funnel too. Okay. You got it? Perfect. Who, who's done this before? What are you guys doing? 10 milliliters, but if you're over, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you just, you just want the oil in solution. Biodiesel has better lubricity than regular diesel fuel, so it'll extend your engine life and reduce friction. The emissions from biodiesel are clean, non-toxic, it's biodegradable, you can essentially drink it, it's less toxic than table salt, it biodegrades faster than sugar, it is a clean, safe, 
non-flammable, non-hazardous, non-toxic alternative to diesel fuel. Well, generally you want to react for about an hour, but we'll see like 85% of the reaction happens like in the first five to 10 minutes. Oh, for like larger batches? Then you use a processor. And we'll do that this afternoon. We then take people to the Boulder Biodiesel Processing Facility where we teach people how to build their own biodiesel processors made from recycled materials like a water heater with the heating elements already in it, some plumbing, some valves, and a pump that people can set up in their own garage that are safe, no fumes, that are clean, and very, very easy to use. I would fill this with oil, so using the oil fill, using the pump, fill it up using the site tube to determine the level, um, you know, have all the valves shut off, and then just start heating. And that's when you're weighing your ingredients. And it's just a heating tank, so that's what it's designed to do anyways. We built one on the spot and showed people how they can do it themselves. That makes 25, 20 gallons or so at a time of biodiesel, and then you get a settling tank that's maybe 150 gallons, which isn't that that big, you know. And then just throw in, you can throw in plenty of bunch of gas. And then we shuttle people around on the university bus, the Buff bus from CU, on 100% biodiesel it's up to Berthoud, Colorado, and visit Rocky Mountain Biodiesel Industries, where they're making 8,000 gallons of biodiesel a day from waste vegetable oil. So essentially at our conference, we give people the skills and the tools they need if they want to make biodiesel in their kitchen, in their backyard, or on a large scale. So you want to use biodiesel. What do you do? First thing you need to do is get yourself a diesel vehicle. Anything that runs diesel will run biodiesel. So like I drive an old Mercedes, you could get the new VW TDI that gets 50 miles a gallon, the new Bug. They also have a diesel version. You can get a pickup truck, Ford F-250, Cummins diesel, Dodge Ram pickup trucks. Then you need to have access to biodiesel. Here in Boulder and Denver and spreading throughout the state, biodiesel is available at the pump. Internationally, we're seeing violence, turmoil, instability, all being very, very connected to the oil industries. So when you go buy gas at the pump, you are supporting an infrastructure that is exploiting people internationally. You're supporting global warming. You're supporting uh, health problems with children. You buy biodiesel, you're essentially eliminating all of the negative stuff that is associated with petroleum fuels. If we want to survive, we have to believe another world is possible. My biodiesel supplier is kind of like the modern day milkman. I get about 10 gallons a week from Mike. He brings it down to my house. He takes the old cans back and then puts more fuel in it for next time. And so we just trade off the jugs every week. Mike set up a biodiesel processor out of a 55 gallon drum. I've been using this system about a year. I started last August and basically started out with this and this. He gets his oil from different restaurants around town, waste vegetable oil that's usually thrown away in the grease dumpster that is found plentiful across the country, actually three billion gallons a year of vegetable oil is put to waste. This is where it starts. I get the oil from the restaurants and run it through this filter to get any of the food chunks out. Yuck. And he's got a couple of other drums for a washing system to purify the biodiesel. And the only byproduct is glycerin, which he uses to make soap. Which one's lavender? Uh, these dark these ones? These dark ones, I believe. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. He sells it to me for about $2.50 a gallon. And I know all that money goes to him and his family. He's got two kids, a beautiful wife. And when I know that all my money for my vehicle and for my fuel is going to actually support people and family, and I know the person who's making it and developing it, I mean, it's just tremendous how you feel about that. We're trying to create a world where people are producing fuel for the friends and family. And you know, you're not gonna go bomb your neighbor or attack you know, the other communities for your fuel resources. This is about community. It's about getting together. It's about engaging and knowing where your fuel comes from. Thanks for joining us again for Common Good. If you're interested in finding more information about the people and organizations you've seen, or learning ways you can help the common good, visit us at commongood.tv.